Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll compare performance of a standard Blazor WebAssembly app to one compiled using ahead of time compiling, or AOT. For this test, I'm using .NET 6 Preview 4. So be aware that this is the first time we've seen AOT in Blazor thus far. There is much room for improvement, but under the right circumstances, the performance gains are very real. How much faster will AOT make a WebAssembly app? Well, the answer to that question is coming up right now, right here on Blaze the Train! So before we can do anything, you need to know that this demo is done using .NET 6 Preview 4, which as you can see here, came out May 25th. So if you're watching this after .NET 6 has been released, hmm, there might be some differences in the performance. But you could still download the code, test it, deploy it, and see for yourself. So go to this blog post, ASP.NET Core Updates in .NET 6 Preview 4 by Dan Roth, May 25th, and it's going to tell you how to download and install the .NET 6 SDK Preview 4. Um, I'm doing it side by side with .NET 5, and it's no problem. So don't be afraid you're going to screw up your machine or anything like that. Just go ahead. They work side by side. Now I'm going to search for AOT in this document to get us down to this area right here, Blazor WebAssembly ahead of time compilation. So this is what we're going to be testing. We're going to be comparing it to the standard uh, WASM interpreted mode. And to do that, we're going to create some code that goes into an iterative loop a million times and does division on two doubles. So that's going to happen a million times. And um, this is a, a kind of a neat demo to see that they're showing uh, five times the speed of performance. If you just click this little video, uh, it shows you they're highlighting this uh, area of an image and then they want to erase it and it takes five times more time to do it interpreted as it does AOT. So this little thing right here got me uh, a little perplexed. You have to, before you can use AOT, you have to uh, do this additional build tool and you have to install it. And the thing is you have to install it from an elevated command prompt, but also from your repo directory. And you only have to do it once, but uh, don't do it in your, you know, Windows system directory. Go to a repo directory and that's where you do it. Now this is the only thing you have to do, and this needs to go in a special place in your project file, which your WebAssembly project file, which it doesn't tell you exactly where it's not completely descriptive, but I'm going to show you. Now it says that you have to do this command line .NET publish C release. So you really don't have to do that. You can publish from Visual Studio. Just make sure that release mode is set, which is the default if you're publishing to Azure. And there are some other gotchas there. We're actually going to publish this to Azure. So the first thing I'm going to do is run Visual Studio Preview. Now you have to install the latest preview in order to get this to work. And I'm going to create a new project. It'll be a Blazor WebAssembly app. Put it in the right folder. Uh, and it's going to be called No AOT Test. So we're going to do two. We'll do No AOT Test and then AOT Test. There'll be two completely different projects, both with the same code, except that one is going to be compiled with AOT. We're going to deploy them both into Azure and see how they perform. Um, now there's one little thing I want to show you here. My original location had a um, exclamation mark in the folder name, and yeah, it didn't like that. And it didn't tell me that it didn't like that, but when I went to run it, I got some weird error. And I discovered just by trial and error that if I created the project in a folder that didn't have that exclamation mark in the name of the folder, then it would work. It's probably just a bug in Preview 4. I'm sure they'll work around it. Nothing to worry about if you're watching this later. So now we got to make sure that .NET 6 
is the framework, right? .NET 6 preview. And I also want to check off that it's ASP.NET Core hosted. Now I've got my index page. So here you go. We have, uh, we can change the number of calculations if you want to change it from a million, which is the default, to 10 million or something like that. Um, that's up to you, but you can check that. And then we have a calculate button and a string message. So the calculate, first I have this is numeric function which just checks to see if it's a numeric string. Uh, and if it is, I'm gonna convert that to an int32. I'm gonna tell my user that I'm calculating. And now we get some random stuff, right? I'm gonna create a new object, and I'm gonna use the hash code from that object to seed a random object, RND. And I'm going to time it. So you can see my start time, date time now. And then I go through this iteration. And from random, I pull out next double twice, one and two. And then I divide one and two. And then I stop. End time is date time now. Then I'm subtracting the start time from the end time, getting the total milliseconds. And there's my message. Total calculations done in so many milliseconds. By the way, there's that is numeric, value.all, and then char.isNumber. Very cool, huh? So let's just run this without any kind of publishing, and let's just see what happens on our regular old VM here. All right, so here we go. A million calculations. 2,035 milliseconds, or two seconds the first time. Second time. Yeah, about the same, 2.2 seconds. All right, now I'm going to deploy this to Azure. And I already have a published profile from Azure. And I'll just import that and publish away. Now, before I hit the publish button, after I've imported my profile, this right here, I'm going to change from framework dependent to self-contained. So click that little button and that's going to be self-contained. Now the reason I'm doing that is because Azure doesn't have support for .NET 6 quite yet. And so I'm going to just make sure that it doesn't depend on any framework that they're providing. And now I'll hit the publish button. Now I spared you all the time it took to publish and all of that, and we're just going right to loading no AOT test .azure -websites .net. All right, so significantly better in release mode. And that's what happens, right? You're in release mode when you publish to Azure. So even as an interpreted WASM app, we're still getting pretty good numbers compared to um, in Visual Studio, 752 milliseconds. All right, the next thing we're going to do is create another application, add the AOT compilation, and publish that to Azure as well. All right, so here's my application. It's called AOT test, not no AOT test. It has the same code, but I'm going to change my H1 to be AOT compiled code. And now, as I said before, we have one little piece to put in here, and that's in the client. And it's right here in the property group. I'm just going to add this run AOT compilation true. But remember, it has to be in the property group under .NET 6.0. Now, here's the thing. I can't run and test this locally in AOT mode. It has to be published. And so that's why they were showing you the command line to publish. Um, just to make it easy, I'm going to go ahead and publish this to Azure just as is. Okay. Just as before, I'm going to change framework dependent to self-contained. And I'm going to publish. And you're going to notice something a little bit different down here first. And I'll get to it in a second. AOTing 31 assemblies. So you're not going to see that unless you've got that AOT compilation set to true. And here we go. 
aottest.azurewebsites.net. And all right, the first time. Second time, 534. Seven sixty nine versus five hundred and fifty two. All right. It doesn't seem like we gained a lot, but here's the thing we can optimize our code so that in that timed loop, we're only doing calculations. We're not going to access that random number generator, which I think is the cause of this being so slow. So let's start here in no AOT test. And I'm going to replace this index with an optimized version. It still has the calculate routine, but now it has a calculate optimized routine also. So let's take a look at this. So up at the top, I've got two buttons now, one to call calculate and one to call calculate optimized. And I've also got these. Check these out. All right. Two arrays of doubles, which I'm creating outside of that iteration. Now right here, before we do the iteration, we're checking to see if that either that array is null or the length isn't equal to the total. In other words, if it's null, we have to create the array. And if it was created before, but we changed the length, then we have to also recreate the array. So here's what we're doing. We're creating the, the array with the total number there. Um, we're creating a new object, getting our hash code, and now we're filling those array values with values from the randomizer, all right? So now we just have an array. And that means when we calculate, all we have to do is the division, all right? This is going to go really much faster as an AOT compiled bit of code. So let's republish this guy. And while that's publishing, We'll go update the AOT test and publish that as well. And the first one to come up is no AOT test. So let's try the regular calculation. That's now about 1.4 seconds and the optimized version, 45 milliseconds, 32 milliseconds. Not bad. And finally, and I mean it, it's been like 10 minutes. I know you didn't notice that, but I did. Here we go. The optimized version. First time, 18 milliseconds. Second time, 3 milliseconds. 2 milliseconds. 3 milliseconds. So let's go back to interpreted. 33 milliseconds versus 3 milliseconds. That's pretty darn impressive. So the moral of the story here is that AOT works fastest on pure code that just does math. In my experience, once you start accessing framework elements, the performance gains are not as uh, awesome. Now that begs a question, which I'm going to give you in the form of a tip. It's actually an anti-tip because you can't do it. What I'd like to do is take this right here, this loop, and ship that off to a class library compiled with AOT. And the rest of the application, I don't want compiled with AOT. Unfortunately, you can't do that. Microsoft says, as of now, it's an all or nothing proposition. You either compile with ahead of time or not. Now the downsides, well, I told you, build time is really high. Like it took 10 minutes for me to build and publish this. Uh, also the size of your executable is gonna be significantly bigger because everything has to be brought down and compiled to WebAssembly. So I hope that gives you a good taste of what is possible with AOT. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. So as you can see, it's a good idea in general to optimize code in a tight loop. Even the interpreted version saw performance gains there. However, when comparing raw math, the AOT version outshined the interpreted version by a factor of 10. 
Long story short, I'm looking forward to checking out the shipping version of .NET 6 in November. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. I'll uh, see you next time. Oh, I'll see you next time on Blaze the Train.